another screen has been fitted to the wing of Keith and John have been working on the French wing, a Lancaster NX664. John has just finished repairing and fitting the ribs, which are between number one and two fuel tank, fastened to the bottom spar. Keith's working on the leading edge, which is assembled onto the front spar, which when finished will be lifted and fitted to the top of the ribs, fastened to the bottom spar. He's also repairing and addressing the upper wing skins. Phil and Norman are working on the alignment of the rear wheel. I can see daylight on that edge actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can see daylight. So if, if you ground a, a bead in on the steel tube, yeah. is, is nothing that a... Uh, uh, a, a, a gentle calibrated smack. Again. Later that day, Phil and Norman completed the task of checking the rear wheel assembly fitted into the support housing. Another half a pound of loading on the hammerhead. Yeah. That's precision as well. Yeah. So. Uh, Keith and John are skimping further skins to the French wing and now riveting. As this wing is for taxiing and static display, 95% of the skins were usable. To be airworthy, all skins would have had to be replaced. Yeah, it does. I thought I'd get a lot of ripples in it with the, with the old skins and that, but they haven't ripples because of bonus. You thought you'd get ripples? Why was that? Because Because of the old skins. But stretched. Yeah, but it stretched. Would have been riveted before. Yeah. You know, you, you tend to stretch around the hole so you get a pucker in between the holes because they've been done before and then you're doing it again yeah so you'll get a pucker in effect but it hasn't it hasn't happened because i've been i dressed all the skins beforehand and took all the little dents out of them yeah and it, as you as you as you knock it flat it closes the hole up again because the material that stretched stretches yeah. towards the hole so all you do is when you put it in you just clear it again and you clear that bit out and you're back to basically starting again. But some of the holes were uh, pretty iffy. Yeah. Not what you can do about it. Would you put a bigger rivet in then, re-drill it or not? Yeah, it will work. Really, you know, on Jane, the skins would have been replaced. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's what you would normally do if you get something like that, you just flatten it down and just go up one side. Yeah. Because if they were, <coughs> you can get repair rivets and that in if they're not American rivets, yeah. which are a bigger shank but the same size head, so it looks exactly the same, but it's got a bigger shank on it. Yeah. Well, we're out of bullets now. Oh, are you? Yeah. Yeah. What, with all it. those um, rivets you've got in the stores? We've got... 750-4s in, in a, what, about a day. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got 2,000 2, more coming. Yeah. They haven't arrived yet. Yeah. Uh, the trouble is you can't jump up and go on to the next bit and leave that bit because you've got to kind of chase it out as you yeah, go. Yeah, and the yeah. material stretches and then you clear those and then carry on. Otherwise you'll end up with a big pucker between yeah. if you if you like you haven't done that bit and then you rivet that bit and then you come back to that bit you could get a pucker not always but sometimes yeah. you get a, a pucker in yeah. it where it stretches both ways got nowhere for the material to flow out because yeah. you've stopped it yeah. so that's why you have to start in one place and then gradually does it really matter if, like that is overlapping this way so you'd start obviously at the bottom <coughs> and work up well it's, it's just a we just started because it's easier to work on that. We could have started on that one and worked our way down. Yeah, it wouldn't have made any difference. It wouldn't have made any difference. But I suppose on several sheets you've got to work in one way. You can't do one sheet up, one sheet down. It depends how the, how the sheet is. Like these are all kind of flat sheets. They're yeah. not wheeled or rolled yeah. or anything like that. If you had a wheeled skin, you'd have to start from the middle and then work your way out yeah. as you go. Because yeah. if you if you try and start at one end, by the time you get down there, all the shape would have been all yes. in the wrong place. Yeah. You've got to pull it down and stretch it as yeah. you go. Yeah. But luckily these are all just flat skinned and just pulled pulled round. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks a neat job. Okay. Yeah, it's coming out all right. Yeah. Considering you, you remember what it would look like <laughs> when it came in. Well, yeah. all, all these, all these are all the hatchet marks. Yeah. And all yeah. around here, you can see on, on there. Yeah. Look, where it was smashed to pieces. Yeah. You know, if it had been Jane, we'd have had to have uh, had a new landing made. Yeah. But that one, I just cobbled up with a repair and put some filler plates in it. And, there's all filler plates in here and yeah. there's all holes behind here. One hole there and a hatchet hole there. It was all blended out. It certainly looks neat and tidy anyway. Yeah. Four time patina. Yeah, yeah. It's all they've done in the, during, the, during the war. It's just yeah. done exactly what we've done. Yeah. Put patches on. Yeah. You'll never know the difference. No. Reference. Even without a coat of paint, it wouldn't do. It looks good. Yeah. Once you've got a coat of paint on it, you can see it. I'll be it. Have you got another a shorter skin? Does it go right up to the... Right go, they go right up to the end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but we can't put that on because we haven't got room 22 in. No, that's the... That's that one oh, there. there yeah. We can't put that in because we haven't got the frost plates that go on the booms. Is that one riveted up yet? No, yeah. no, not yet. Yeah. Are the cross plates being made or are you looking for them still? I think they're being made. They're having trouble um, getting the steel, the correct steel. Because uh -huh. uh, that place in uh, Ukraine that was the oh, in Mariupol, yeah. That steel works steel there works, yeah. was the major steel works for Europe, producing all different types of steel, and obviously that's been taken out. So now there's a shortage of the steel. It's surprising, isn't it? You it get, is, you get yeah, effect. You yeah. don't think about it. No. But I think they're looking for an alternative or whatever. Yeah. It doesn't really matter with this, it's not going flying, but mm -hmm. if we come to do James and, they, yeah. and they're knackered on James, then, are they? then you, I don't know. Oh, I see. But if yeah. they are, yeah. you're going to run into a problem then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot in planning on getting the material so the job can go straight ahead, isn't there? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. And what about the um, the booms? Have they done anything about that? Is Andrew sort of sussed any material? That's above out? my pay grade. Oh, is it? All oh, right. I'm Connie scum. I don't. I'm not. <coughs> I'm not involved with that yeah. bit. 
you'll, oh. be, you'll be happy next week when you get the little tap to get all these thousands of... Oh, we've got the taps. You've got them, have you? Oh, yes. Yeah. How many have you got? Bob's got ten. Yeah. Are they just the, the one tap? They're not a, a starter tap, it's just one. Right, you get I start and middle I, I, I didn't three. probably look at me, he, he just generally showed me, he said, look, yeah. uh, oh. then they said they were £105 each. Yeah. Yeah. They've been made special. Yeah. They're not an off the shelf. No. So. Yeah, because you've got to think about doing Jane as well, if he smashes a couple or anything on, or even if they get blunt. Oh, yeah, well. Yeah. What you've got, all, all James ones that are all going to have to be drilled. All yeah. done from thing, yeah. thing, because you won't have any like these. You no. Just clear the holes. You're going to have to retap all, because yeah. they're all going to be blank booms. Yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. I'm coming to do James ones. Yeah. That's going to be fun and games. Yeah. It'll keep you happy. You're not retiring yet, are you? <laughs> I don't know. Is your dinner I'll time? Before anyway. I see this fly. <laughs> right, thanks a lot, Keith. That was good. Thank you. Lunch time. Yep. Norman is about to start dismantling the rear wheel oleo they have acquired from Australia. They require parts from this assembly for the next just changed rear wheel airway. So you're checking this before you take it apart, just in case it... Just make sure there's no pressure in there. If it is, it shoot out and get you, yeah. would it? Or well, I might have to go down the hangar and fetch the bits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing in it. Nothing at all. Yeah. It, what, the, what they want is this piece off, because oh. that play there, but to get that piece off you have to take this off, to get this off you have to take the ferrules out, but we haven't got the ferrule removal tool, so I don't want to damage this one taking it apart, so I'm going to try and see how easy to take them apart on this one, but practice on this one, yeah. to see what we need to do, I said to Bob, if we, if we take this one apart, and damage anything taking it apart, it's too close to the flying season to um, put it together all the time. So I don't want to do any more than we've done now until I can see if we get ferrules out. Yeah. So, so they look they look like they might come out easier this one. They look so like what sorry? They might come out easier. Yeah. Which, which part are you talking about when you said the ferrules? These here are ferrules. Yeah. So there's a there's a threaded bar all the way through, and you screw the ferrule onto the threaded oh, bar, I and that see. locks it in place. Yeah. So there's one, so there's what a pair there, and there's a pair there and a pair there. Mm -hmm. But they're um, they're peened over, so they peened the um, the ferrule to the threaded bar. Yeah. So you've got to try and get that. They're not. They're not designed to come back up again, no. but if you read the instructions out to get the insides of the leg out, you have to take this off. So to yeah. get this off, you have to get them off. So it does, sort of doesn't make sense. No. So it's, it's now trying... Are they then, uh, like a screwdriver slot across there? Yeah, then? but it's a screwdriver slot, but with a, uh, you need like a curve in it for the, to go over the thread, because it doesn't go all the way across. Because oh, yeah. right in the middle is a, is, a, is a threaded bar that goes all the way through. Yeah. So they're locking down and screwing onto the threaded bar. And then to lock them in place, you peen them over. Yeah. But when I was at BBMF, we peened, we peened there on the threaded. We squashed the, um, the tube into, the, into there. But what they've done on this one, it looks like they've done this one, they've actually peened it on the threaded bar, which makes it harder to get on, undone. Yeah. Yeah. And we haven't got the new ones, so I don't want to take them off and damage them and realise we haven't got any more. But if BBM a lad from BBM is going to help me this afternoon to bring yeah. some tools over and see if they've got a, a, a tool that actually will take them out. We think 
Well, you show me the picture, it looks like the right tool. Yeah. But I'm not convinced. Oh. So when, well, he, turn, when, he, turns up, when he turns up after dinner, I'll see what he's got. But if he doesn't turn up, he's not sure if he can get here today. If he doesn't, then we're going there next week anyway to uh, take some bits back we bor that we borrowed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and take it with you and never go. Will yeah, you? yeah. Well, I'll just I'll just have a look at it there now and just yeah. fill the paper again to, to uh, loan it. Oh, Lancaster now take the transporter removed from the fuselage and replaced with a trestle.